Well, hi, everyone. Well, it seems like it's another week, another landslide. I've covered landslides such as the ones in uh, Rancho Palos Verdes, California, landslide, the Chilcotin landslide in Canada. And today I'm going to cover a landslide that's occurring in Switzerland, a very scenic area, and it's uh, pretty dramatic what's going on, although the people there seem pretty resilient and are prepared to deal with this massive encroachment of rock and other debris moving towards their town. So this is the area we're talking about. It involves a zone of material that's got a volume of 1.2 million cubic meters, which is over one and a half million cubic yards. Put that in perspective, it would take over 100,000 14 yard dump trucks to haul that material away. So this is occurring in the town of Brienz Brinzals in Switzerland, quite a picturesque town. This slide has been going on pretty actively for the last couple of years and has really started to accelerate this year with movement of over a foot a week. Here's a couple of views from Google Maps Street View. Since this roadway is closed closer to the slide, Street view wouldn't allow navigation to that point. I've never seen that before, which is kind of odd, but I can get kind of close. So this is the overall area that we're talking about. I'll just zoom out here, give you some perspective in Google Earth. Now, as usual, I'm gonna have links to the various articles and videos that I reference in this video. And there was a lot of great information in this video here, which was published on the site Swiss Info. You see they're mapping the area. The purple and red is the most active zone of the slide. So we'll kind of pan around here. That's the slide again, just above the town. A lot of rock. With that bare slope, any additional precipitation, which is likely to occur this winter, is going to increase the rate of movement of that landslide. So let's go back to this article here. And uh, this is refreshing. Because the geologist quoted in this article indicates that he's monitoring the risk and says the instability of the mountain face is a local phenomenon that has nothing to do with climate change. You know, not just for this story. There's, there's other news sources that immediately portray this landslide with, through the lens of global warming. And uh, that's become far too convenient of a scapegoat, in my opinion. You know, we saw this in Minnesota with the rapid dam overtopping where the governor of Minnesota indicated immediately that it was due to global warming, when in fact there had been previous episodes going back decades of much higher flows. It was essentially a lack of maintenance and operation, improper operation of that dam. But let's go through what he is talking about here. Geologist Stefan Schneider, who is closely monitoring events, pointed out landslides like the one in Brienz are common in the region. The instability of the mountain also has nothing to do with climate change, he said. The phenomenon dates back many years with the first recorded debris flow in Brienz occurring in 1878. At the time, similar sized masses of rock were moving downhill towards the village by about 4 meters a day. This continued for 18 months until the landslide finally stopped 100 meters from the village. And uh, this is the last part of the article that I'll reference here. Recent studies suggest the climate change is intensifying natural hazard in the mountains, posing major challenges for the Alpine region. Rock falls in the high Alpine region have increased in recent decades. Permafrost there is thawing and the glaciers are receding. Schneider said extreme weather, heavier than normal and more frequent precipitation in the mountains, linked to climate change does not have a direct effect on the speed at which rocks slide downhill. Instead, it is the long periods of extreme weather, such as very wet summers or very snowy winters, that seem to have an impact. But these are not directly attributable to climate change, he's insisted. So let's just get oriented here. That debris slide that I just showed you is in the town of Brienz Brinzals. And if we go to the west through a northwesterly loop, we reach the town of Brienz. And there's been numerous slides in that town as well. And this was recorded last year, pretty dramatic. So let's just show you the overall area. This is the location for these other slides. You can see the aftermath, a lot of debris that had to be dug out from the town, which is what they're doing here. And it's interesting too, that they've built these walls, these catchment walls to let water flow through, but 
to try and retain the bulk of the debris before it reaches the town. So let's look at a couple of these walls in the town of Brienz. You can see these flow areas from the higher portion of the, of the hills, just to kind of get orient you here relative to the town. So for the village of Brienz Brinzals, they've already started to evacuate. There's just too much of a risk that a mass of material could cut loose suddenly and inundate homes and roads and so on. So I'll continue to monitor this story. I think this slide's likely to become much more active over the winter. But again, we're, these kind of issues aren't unique to California. They're common in New Zealand, as I mentioned, Canada, all over the world. And there's an intersection of human development and geologic and weather conditions. And uh, people need to be, I think, more circumspect about the causes and possible solutions, particularly as areas continue to grow, have increased development, it makes the impacts from these natural events all that greater uh, relative to the humans. So with that, I wanna send out a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support as well as those of you who provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. I'm gonna roll credits at the end. But as I've done with recent videos, I want to mention a book that I recently read, and it's called Carrying the Fire. It's by astronaut Michael Collins from the Apollo 11 crew, as well as other manned astronaut missions previous to that. It's probably the most open and honest autobiography that I've ever encountered in recent memory. It's, he tells you what he thinks about other astronauts, the program, what it took to become an astronaut, he's very forthcoming. And uh, it's good to remind yourself of what it takes for humans to do this type of exploration in terms of training, temperament, skills, and so on. So again, I would highly recommend this book to anybody who's interested in space or just you know, from a broader American history standpoint. I think it's a, a really great book. Well, thanks for watching everyone and please stay tuned for future videos. I've got a lot of exciting updates to some of my long running series as well as entirely new topics related to engineering and construction coming up. Thanks very much.